What's going on, guys? Hi, everyone. Well, hi, Brittany and Doxy. <laughs> hi, Brittany. Hi, Doxy. How's everybody doing tonight? You guys been doing good this week? Weather's holding up good, I hope. It's okay, Doxy. You don't got to say hi to me. That's cool. <laughs> I'm starting to really realize on how much Doxy. This way you're supposed to say like, oh, no, she don't. But now that. Okay. No, I didn't. I'm sorry. I didn't hear any. I didn't hear. Uh -huh. you yeah, cut yeah out. it's cool. You cut out. You cut out. It's cool. I'm yep. totally. No, she loves you. Uh-huh. If I'm I cut so out, then how'd you hear what I said? I didn't, but I assumed you said something negative. <laughs> uh, no. Yeah, but you said, yeah. All right. All right. I didn't hear you. I swear. Uh -huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's going on, Brittany, Soli, Doxy? <laughs> Goodness gracious. How's your guys' Wednesday going? I know I've asked how's your week going, but. You guys have had a good day so far, I hope. I know, I'm sitting outside smoking a cigarette right now, so I might be a little choppy. I'm going to go inside and turn my computer on here in a minute. I'm just smoking a cigarette. So have you guys been looking at this uh, the ship hitting the bridge? What's going on, Rowdy? Hi, Rowdy. PJ? Hi, So wait, did you do any research on it or did you or not oh, yeah. research but have you looked at it at all oh yeah yep i find it a little bit um suspicious yeah no what I, they say. yeah no i and that's the thing though is like right now in the day and age that we're in it just everybody including myself everybody's gonna find everything suspicious but from everything that i've been looking into on this so far um it, it doesn't seem suspicious at all. It just seems like the pop, the ship lost power. And when you lose power like that, there's, there's a million and one reasons on how they could lose power. But when you're looking at the ship while it was, uh, w right when it lost power and it came back up, uh, the ship was bellowing out black smoke, which is, uh, oh. uh that's an obvious engine problem. Right. You know, yeah. and so, uh, well, it, yeah, oil, you got too much oil in the diesel fuel or it just, there could be, a, like I said, multitudes of problems. Um, <clears throat> but the one good thing out of all of it so far is that, you know, they were able to um, get a distress call out and get the traffic stopped in time. So, uh, so that there wasn't any like uh, uh, passer buyers on, on the highway, there wasn't any, um, any vehicles on the highway that were actual um, traffic goers. Now, the ones that did and were on the highway, those guys were construction workers. Um, there was construction going on at night. Um, and in a lot of towns like that, especially on bridge work, uh, they'll do a lot of the work at nighttime in, the, in those uh, late hours because there's no traffic, um, you know, and there's not a lot of obstacles and stuff. When you're doing bridge work and stuff like that, you kind of want to have as much room as possible. So it was good that they were doing that at night. Yeah. And, uh, but those were the uh, unfortunate ones that, I mean, they were unfortunate, but they were fortunate or they were kind of heroes at the same time because, you know, I, 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 the first reports were, that the uh, construction workers were the ones that were getting people off the uh, off the um, bridge originally before the cops and everybody got there to block off the highway or block off the bridge. Um, so there was six fatalities. Um, today they went from it being a rescue operation to a re uh, retrieval or a, um, a, oh, what do they call that? Not a rescue, not a retrieval, but a, a recovery recovery thank you so oh good you guys you guys have been paying attention to it a little bit yeah that sh that ship was massive massive like 
and that's the thing too that a lot of people don't realize is that when you lose power on ships like those even if they're just barely even floating the weight of them alone and in order like what is it the law of motion or something like i don't know i don't i don't know all newton's laws but like once it's in motion it has to have an equal or opposite um motion to get it to stop right so like you can put as much as you want in the way but until it's enough to get it to go or to stop and go the other way then yeah yeah they're gonna have to rebuild the bridge eventually um right now they are working on the recovery of the ones that they can um they don't want to start moving the boat or getting rid of any of the damaged bridge yet because of the recovery efforts they have divers in the water and um you don't want anything falling off the bridge and falling down to the bottom oh it, you could have just said that out loud so I, <laughs> I <know. laughs> but um no so it like a lot of people just don't understand like that's a you know that's essentially a giant moving city like <clears throat> and to stop it it's gonna take a lot and one of the things that weren't on that ship are the the side propulsion and stuff um some of the ships large cargo ships um have side propulsion on them not a lot of them um have it uh if any i actually you know you'll see that a lot more on cruise ships and stuff like that um, a lot of these ships are single propeller um, at the rear of the ship. So, you know, it, to turn the ships takes a really, really big, wide turn. It has to, like, it, you know, imagine a semi, but times a thousand. You know, so to move the, to just move these things around, it, it's, it's pretty intense and it's really hard. Uh, even when they're floating on the, the to the side like they were they were kind of just drifting um the angle that you're looking at it is kind of deceiving and it being dark kind of plays a little bit of tricks on your eyes at which direction it was actually angled and facing so yeah. um i'm not religious so you know i'm i'm glad let ends tomorrow she's saying that because then she gets she gets to um, disagree with you again. Uh, that, that you know what the problem is. Even if she's not disagreeing <laughs> in the chats, I know she's at home just swearing at me. So <laughs> it's she can do and say whatever she wants. The fact still remains the same. Yeah, solely, and that's what a lot of people were saying. But with those suspension bridges, the way that they're designed and built they rely on those pillars the most that's where the majority of the weight is distributed so when one of those pillars go down all, all the whole entire bridge will go down it's like a domino effect so those pillars are what actually hold up almost the entirety of the weight and the pillar that they hit was almost in the center of the the bridge so when one section went down um the weight of everything and the bolts and the steel ripping and tearing from the weight and pressures and everything like it just all that stuff happening at the exact same time um bridges and steel uh, for that matter they're not no matter how you design them they're not really designed for that type of a catastrophic event so fast um now like if the bridge if the, he would have they would have hit the bridge maybe sideways to where they hit both like two of the pillars then maybe the entire destruction of it would have been dispersed a little bit more but because they hit that one single pillar with the entirety of the force of that boat that's the reason why because it sent like a shock wave throughout the rest of the uh the uh the bridge Well, who made me? My mom and dad. <laughs> I don't know if everybody knows, but if you put a D inside a P, you get a B. <laughs> it's 
going on, FarQ? Hi, FarQ. I got a video here in a few minutes for us to <laughs> to check out. And the guy, he's a um, maritime man over there. He's from the Baltimore area. Um, so he uh, he actually has a lot of information, and he kind of breaks it down real well for us. Um, yeah, that and that's that's kind of just the way that it, it is in engineering. Um, you know, you guys, you guys remember how, uh, the towers fell, you know, and they didn't even get hit at the bottom. They fell from the top down. And usually you think of buildings falling over, you know, or, and stuff like that. You don't really think of them falling, crumpling down on top of themselves like that. Unless they were detonated. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> but um we're trying to trying to do a actual update sway you know okay, a, a, I'm sorry. a real one everyone in here is not going to believe anything i'm saying if we just keep saying oh it's conspiracy it's conspiracy it's conspiracy <laughs> because i do i i'm right there with you you know i am i'm right mm -hmm. there with you i'm right there with you but you know we got pj in the chat so yeah you know her her conspiracy theories are non-existent so we you know we gotta we gotta make the needy happy okay <laughs> she's trying to behave she said oh <laughs> solely i said i'm not religious i didn't say i didn't believe in god Anyways, um, but yeah, so you, you seen the boat uh, exited the dock and like no longer it started making its turn towards uh, the channel where it needed to go under the bridge and through the bridge and stuff. Um, it. Uh, you see it lose power once and then they restart. We're able to get the engines and everything restarted. And then you seen when. um no shits. No, duh. Goodness gracious. Um, but when you've seen the boat shifting to the side, you've seen the power come back up. And then just a few moments later, the power went back down. So, like, even in the time frame that they had the power, uh, the engine and everything, the power back up, you know, they didn't have enough time to make any real corrections to the boat because it, it takes a, a large amount of space and time and effort to get those boats to move um and so you know it it lost its power and one of the things that the uh ship also did too to help slow it down a little bit but again you guys got to remember this is like throwing fish hooks out the back of a car going 90 miles an hour uh, you know they they did drop their anchors but their anchors aren't made to stop them they're made to slow them down um, or right. keep them in place, you know, uh, they're not made to, for stopping. Uh, so the anchor, they did drop the rear anchor and when they dropped the rear port side anchor, which would be the left side of the anchor or left side of the boat, if you were looking at the front of the boat, um, they did drop the anchor on the left side of the boat and that actually made the bow, uh, the front end of the boat turn. A little bit more than what it normally would have um so you know uh also too they haven't done any um investigations on it yet or anything so we don't know if the rudder was stuck if the if there was something in the prop uh if there was if it was bad gas if it was blown fuses if it was bad bad electrical um so you know there's there's a lot there that could have happened and uh, the, the severity of it is, is a, you know, we, we had six people lose their lives during it. So, you know, that's, that's a tragedy in and of itself. Um, luckily we didn't have more, uh, but we did have the six and then, uh, also, you know, that bridge was a main heartbeat in Baltimore, you know, uh, a lot of people took that bridge to and from work every single day. I think they said an average of 35,000 people a day use that bridge. 
Um, and so that means 35,000 people have to find different directions, um, to and from work or, uh, to and from home or where, you know, whatever they got to do. Uh, and then also too, you know, uh, the Baltimore port there, uh, it's actually the ninth largest port in the United States. So it's a very, very large, uh, shipping area for us. Hi, Candace. Hey, Candace, how's it going? And yeah, Doxy, uh, six people died. Uh, they were on the bridge. I uh, will show the video here in a little while. And you can actually see the vehicles on the bridge when the bridge collapses. Um, um, they did say they got the black box and they're going to start reviewing that. So that's good. Yeah, they. I mean, everything on the ship, no one on the ship was injured or uh, hurt in any way, shape, or form. I, I believe there might have been some bumps and bruises and stuff, but not nothing uh, considerate or, you know, uh, large in manner. Um, right. But, uh, you know, so everybody that was on board is going to obviously be talked to and find they're going to, there's going to be a huge investigation on this. I mean, it's not, uh, <clears throat> yeah, they, everything has a black box. You know, just about just about everything these days has a black box. Yeah. Your car even has a black box. Um, but anyway, they they're going to retrieve all that information. You know, they're going to um, contact or uh, in, uh, in, or uh, question the all the crew members and everything like that. You know, I mean, it's going to be a thorough investigation. the The main thing for me that I see out of this whole situation is that the death toll could have been much, much, much worse. So the the people that responded and even the people on the boat, you know, they called a mayday uh, so far in advance that there was, they were, it gave enough time to get as many people as possible off of the bridge. Um, and then the people that were part of the response team and response, you know, uh, individuals that were stopping the traffic and trying to, uh, do all that. Um, you know, they were, they called the mayday in time to allow them to get there. So that, that's a huge thing because, uh, before the boat hits the bridge and you watch it collapse, you actually see there, there's not like rush hour traffic on there or nothing. You got to remember this happened at 1 AM Eastern standard time. So it happened well, way, way in the morning. Um, but there was still traffic going back and forth across this bridge. Um, as the boat was losing, um, losing power, regaining power, losing power, and actually drifting towards the pipe, the main, um, support uh, structure. So, uh, you know, that, that, that for me is the huge positive is because, you know, the training efforts of everybody and the training that everybody had for an incident like this, or, um, a disaster like this, uh, they're, they they all kicked in and they knew what to do. So it was able to really minimize the amount of uh, death that actually occurred in the in the, the situation. And that's that's huge. Um, secondly, you know, like I said, the crew members and everybody did what they were supposed to do uh, uh, soon enough. You know, imagine if the crew members were so busy and everything trying to figure out the problem and they just didn't they didn't make the call soon enough. Imagine the disaster that could have happened then. Um, there could have been much more. Uh, there, I believe there was two individuals saved out of the water and then six perished. Yeah. So. Yeah, re remember when that bridge collapsed in, in uh, Minnesota? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was awful. Yeah. So, you know, I don't. I, from everything that I'm seeing right now, you know, this, this all was just a simple, a simple shipping accident. There's no, there's no, uh, you know, I was on submarines, so I know a lot about shipping and I know a lot about how, uh, objects work in water. And I mean, whether they were underwater or on top of the water, you know, I still had to study both. Uh, it didn't look like anything malicious was going on it literally looked like the boat lo lo the boat was on its way out it lost power dropped its anchor the front end of the boat swung and then once they regained power it looked like it started heading in the direction that it swung and then they lost power again 
and then it collided with the bridge. So it, it doesn't look anything malicious to me. Um, you know, they, again, they haven't, they haven't done the inv- investigations. They haven't uh, looked into how everything happened or what ha- actually happened. You know, it, it just got done uh, going from a rescue to a recovery. And, you know, the investigations and everything will start afterwards. There are a lot of investigation, uh, investigate, investigatory. I, Jesus, I can't speak. Um, there are uh, investigating people or there are people investigating. Wow, that took me a long time to get figured out. I need to quit smoking so much weed. Um, you know, it, there are a lot of people on board already starting the investigations. Uh, there's a lot of inspectors that are on board checking the hole, um, making sure, you know, everything's intact. Uh, there is a lot of damage done to the boat. The boat is going to have to be worked on prior to uh, being able, being eligible to sail again. So that, you know, that is a problem, but right now they're not going to try moving the boat. They're not going to try disassembling the bridge. They're not going to move anything until they re- re- are done doing the recovery efforts. As soon as they're finished with the recovery efforts, then it's going to go into the full scale um, cleanup. And then they'll have to um, think about what they're going to do for their next bridge and whatnot. Uh, so there's, there's many a steps and this, this isn't going to get fixed anytime soon. Um, you know, and not only does it restrict several uh, ships that were supposed to be going out, it also restricts all the ships that were supposed to be coming in to that port as well. Um, so, you know, this is going to have a ripple effect. You know, we don't, I don't know exactly what goods are shipped into there or not. Um, yeah, I was on submarines there. They're a lot of fun. They're a lot of fun. You don't really um, notice. This says that. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I was just going to say that the co-administrator for the container royalty told CNN that the ship was anchored at the port for at least 48 hours prior to the deadly crash, said that the refrigerated boxes had tripped breakers on board the ship on several occasions and mechanics had been trying to fix the issues. Um, so it looks like they were having te- uh, electrical problems with it 48 hours prior to it. So, Okay. Yeah, there you go. Well, good. I'm glad you found that article because I didn't see it. Well, how long ago was that posted? Uh, let's see. It's yes, Doxy. Baltimore is in Maryland. Yep. Um, six hours ago. Okay. All right. So, yeah, there you go. Um, but it seems like there was an electrical issue, you know, so, uh, but to me too, it, I mean, they're probably going to find out that through that electrical issue, it probably loaded the engine up on diesel fuel. That's yeah. why there was a lot of black smoke, but you know, and and that's the things that they're gonna have. No, when and you guys would be surprised. No, you don't. Like before you set sail, not everything has to be perfectly um, taken care of. And you guys got to also remember too is that when you're dealing with electrical, especially uh, if you're replacing fuses, those fuses may last an hour, and then it blows or it lasts 10 minutes and then it blows or, you know, whatever. And they might've thought, okay, well, because these guys get charged and everything while they're at dock, you know, they get there and they have set schedules. They have to go by. Also the boats aren't ran by the captains. The boats are just, uh, captained by the captains and the, the, the people on the vessel, the vessel is actually controlled by another company. And they have to do what they're told when they're told. So if they were supposed to be out by that time, you know, the company's putting pressure on them. Sorry, guys. Uh, The company's putting pressure on them to get that boat out of dock and get going. So if they're having electrical issues to make the company happy, they might say, okay, these fuses, you know, they're lasting for us for about two to three hours while we're sitting here at dock. So that'll give us enough time to get out to sea 
to find out what the true problem is. And then we can do what we need to do while we're out in the open ocean, you know? Um, and then when they got underway, it may have put too much of a load, an electrical load on the system that it ended up blowing the, the fuses faster than what they were expecting. And it ended up causing the situation that they're causing, you know, like when we would go out to sea at times on submarines, we weren't a hundred percent done with all the things that we needed to do but we were a hundred percent done with the things that we felt were necessary to get us to be out in the water and on our way. Um, you do fix problems while you're underway. Uh, it's just how, yeah, it, how it, it all did, happened. It did say that the electrical problem did call, cause complete engine failure. Correct. Yeah. Which makes sense. I mean, yep. yeah, that makes sense. So I, I, I do agree, you know, and I, I do understand where people uh, think, well, why are you heading out to sea when you have an electrical issue? You know, at the time, it was an electrical issue with the refrigeration system. So maybe they just thought, OK, this stuff's going to stay cold long enough. We'll work on it while we're out to sea or we'll work on it while we're going. And then when they got underway, this stuff happening started happening or maybe they thought they got the final fix on it and we're good to go. And then when they got all underway and got a full load on everything, because you got to remember, there's a difference between being in port. You don't have all your equipment on. You don't have uh, everything running at its full load, which it's its full capacity. It's full electrical load. Um, you don't have the, any of the machinery running at all of that. So when you're testing things, um, sometimes you just don't realize that hey this is going to be a problem once everything gets under a full load it just those are some problems that are unforeseen i'm not saying that i don't know what the exact issue was right so i'm just going off of that little article that sway had read so i don't know what the exact issue was right there could have been a lot, lot larger severity to it that ends up coming out you know uh over the next couple of weeks we're going to get more and more and more information so you can't really just you can't really make an assumption of exactly what happened because it, there's there's a multitude you know it's kind of like with uh with airplane crashes or anything like that there's multitudes of reasons on why um systems fail and usually usually you have a backup system to a backup system to a backup system. So, you know, um, <laughs> when a ship loses complete power, that's a, that's a considered a catastrophic event on, uh, on board the ship, something catastrophic happened. So it could have been that the power plant blew up. Um, you know, the, the whole electrical box, uh, shorted out, um, who knows you know there there's a like i said you gotta wait until they do the investigation to really know what happened but that's not out of the ordinary for ships to get underway with a few things going on yeah doxy they said they were going too fast to drop the anchor safely like no it, they like they dropping did. the anchor wasn't gonna stop it so they did drop one anchor yeah, they dropped it, but it, they said that it was going too fast to stop it. So, oh like, it no, and really... that's that's what I had mentioned earlier. Yeah, is that yeah. the 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 anchors um, they're not they're not meant to stop anything. They're meant to slow you down or keep you in place. They're not meant to stop you. Um, you know, and I know that makes no sense, but like I said, when you have a a ship of that size, um, it's like dropping. It's like throwing a fishing line out the back of your car going 80 miles, 90 miles an hour, hoping that it's going to stop you. Like it just, it doesn't, the weight does not transfer. That thing would have to be, it would have to be buried miles under the ground. And then at that time, the, the, uh, tugging on the, on the, um, chain links of those things would still break. So it's, it, it's just, a. we got to remember how big these things are. You know, um, I don't know if any, I, I'm assuming that not a lot of people have been next to these container ships, but um, they they are fucking insane, like just absolutely insane. Kind of like a train when the tr they try to you know uh, stop real fast, they can't stop. 
Yeah, exactly. No, and then that's exactly it. And you got to remember too, is like when you're in the water, you don't have anything creating friction like you do with right. brakes and like you do with um, on trains and stuff like that. So you don't really have when it like the stopping is completely outside the normal of what anything we're used to. Um, now imagine, imagine here's a, a thought for you guys. Imagine ice skating and all you do is just, you throw a hook behind you. You know, you, you just throw a, a small hook behind you because you got to remember these anchors, they're not anywhere near the size of what these boats are. Like if you threw an anchor big enough to stop one of these boats, that boat ain't going anywhere because the anchor is going to be so big and heavy that it's going to sink the ship to the bottom of the ocean. You know, so all they do is they, like I said, they put these anchors in and they put numerous ones on there to slow it down, not to stop it or to allow it to stay in place. Um, I don't know if anybody ever has been fishing on a boat or anything and you anchor out to sea or you anchor out in the lake or anything like that. When you anchor, you you actually don't even stay in the same spot. You no, drift around. You drift. And yep. even you in your boat, that anchor dug down into the mud and stuff. Sometimes the wind is so strong that it's actually pushing the boat and it's dragging that anchor down in the, in the, um, the mud. So, um, you know, it's, it, it's a little different when you're on water. You know, I was watching, um, I was watching the other day where, uh, yeah, yeah, we still do. Um, yeah. And, and solely like a lot of these things that are designed on these, um, they are so insanely developed that I wish I was smart enough to be able to come up with some kind of uh, mechanism for them. Uh, you know, like just understanding the, uh, for me personally, just understanding the complexity that goes into everything that was involved in this accident. It, uh, it's really understandable on how all of it could happen. Um, you know, it, it's not, uh, it's not, uh, acceptable that it did happen, but it's understandable on how it did happen. Um, you know, yeah, we have to be a little more on top of things, but there's, like I said, there, there's some things that are not outside the norm that lead to something outside the norm. And that seems like what something happened here today. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if it was faulty before it left. Yeah. And I mean, like us, you know, we, we had done, um, some work in the dry dock one time when I was on a sub on my submarine and, uh, we did some work on the dry dock or at the dry dock on our, um, our, our steering systems that we have on there. And while we were out to sea, you know, we had just got done doing work on it, replacing a bunch of stuff, <clears throat> fixing a bunch of linkaging and all sorts of, you know, fun jazz. And, there was one bolt that we didn't replace with new material or with a new bolt. We just put the old bolt back in. And while we were out to see, uh, that bolt ended up, uh, breaking. It ended up breaking because all the other material that we put in there was all brand new and it wasn't, it didn't have any durability to it where all the other steel and stuff that we had in there was already like all worn in and whatnot so it already had the it was already it was already used and abused so it, it was used to creaking and cracking this stuff wasn't so it put so much pressure on that individual bolt um that bolt was so used that it broke and then our submarine ended up into a a, a dive out in the middle of the ocean and you know we had to go scrambling all over the place to uh to get the boat face the submarine facing back up so that we weren't heading down to the bottom of the ocean but uh you know so there there's catastrophic events that you know that we did a normal repair fixed the, everything normal the only thing we did was not replace one of the bolts which doesn't seem like it would be a big deal but when you start putting all the other factors into it it becomes a big deal 
And so it was a normal thing that ended up becoming, you know, an abnormal situation. Yeah, and so it, it all, like I said, it all, um, it all seems very logical on how everything happened. I know everybody and their brother are going to try to call this a conspiracy and all this other stuff. And, you know, you can, you can call it what you want, but coming from an ex submariner. And like I said, you know, I'm going to go in here right now and I'm going to show you guys a video, um, of this, um, this guy, he's a, a maritime officer that works and lives right there in the Baltimore area. And he, uh, he breaks it down kind of what happened and how it happened and what went on a little bit better than what I did and in a little bit better terminology than what I did. And when you listen to it, it makes it make sense, you know, and you know, you, you listen to, he's a professional and he's a, um, he, he works directly into industry and all just has every qualification you could possibly want. Um, he's going to show us how it happened and, um, why it would happen, you know, and kind of explain these things where, like I said, you know, we're, we're used to being, Oh, this is conspiracy. That's conspiracy. And I'm trying to get us away from that. And I'm trying to get us to a point where we can show factual things where not everything's a conspiracy. Yeah, guys, not everything is. <laughs> I do love conspiracies, you know, and I do look at everything as conspiracy. I ain't going to lie. I do. Nope. I look at, look at a lot as conspiracies, but sometimes, you, you know, you to. just have to. Well, sometimes you have to just accept. Also, you have to just accept what is, you know, when it is yes. what it is, then it, that's what it is. There's like you can't. It's what is that? Occam's razor. Like you yep. can't go making yep. shit up when something's so blatantly obvious. Yep, yep, yep. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull my, um, I'm gonna pull my computer up. Do you have any more articles that you found, Sway? Um. Can you find anything that might be a little newer? Uh, yeah. Hold on. Let me see if I got the. I just gotta get my computer to load up a minute. Yeah, they said the container ship had been previously involved in a minor incident in, in the Belgian port of Antwerp. Um, oh yeah, that. It also they they sh well this video that we're gonna show is it's it's been under rigorous amounts of um, inspections, so it's not like this ship was just unseaworthy. <clears throat> and it was flying a Singapore. It was flying a Singapore flag, and like. It, you don't have too many things happen, you know, out of Singapore, you know, like some of Singapore is a relatively quiet country. So that's another reason on why if anybody uh, wants to sit there and be like, Oh, this was a conspiracy or whatever. It's like, no, nah, it's, it's actually not. Um, let's see. This is 22 minutes ago. says the crew of 22 of the container ship, the Dolly, had just 251 seconds to avert disaster before the 100,000-ton vessel slammed into the U.S. city of Baltimore's main bridge. So, you got to put it into perspective also. It's a 100,000-ton vessel. I mean, gee, many Christmas. Whether it was on purpose or not, which it wasn't, but... I mean, that's just huge amount of weight to crash into anything. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh, am I by myself? No, you're not. Sorry, I had to reset my internet. Oh, that's all right. I was just making sure I'm still on. 
Um, For what pressure? Okay, what were you asking? Oh, I was just saying even, I mean, I know it wasn't on purpose or anything, but just a hundred thousand ton vessel. I mean, gee, Merry Christmas. Yeah. That's, and that's it was a going, lot of weight. It was going eight knots. Yeah, eight knots. And it only had 251 seconds to avert a, a disaster. So there was just no way it was not going to hit it somehow. Like I said, you know, with how large of a container ship it is, like during that time, it, if you have any kind of event like that, it's a catastrophic event. Like you can't. Just, um, and, and miss everything. You know what I mean? Like it's just, uh, yeah. It's too large, too heavy, um, and it's it's impossible to just even stop, let alone, um, like, they're impossible to stop, let alone turn on a dime. Yeah, and they said it went completely dark, and um, they're saying that silence is the enemy of it on a ship, so... Yeah, they're moving fully loaded they said it can weigh 116,000 tons Jesus yeah give me a minute my internet's messing up on me now can you hear me yeah yeah, you're kind of going in and out. Um, yeah, my internet's messing up. Give me a minute. Okay. Yeah, so, like, I it had been really surprising if it, if the bridge hadn't have even collapsed. I mean, Jesus, just the ton alone. 100,000 tons. Yeah, it says without power, the ship's diesel engine had no pumps feeding it fuel, air, or lubrication. So this, that's what they're saying is, was the black smoke. So see they were they were already they were already um calling for help as soon as yeah, the stuff went went down. So they weren't like sneaking up just to hit it. Right. Yeah, they were uh they were they were on top of it. That's what I said. That's what I was yeah. saying. Yeah, I saw the presser you put in chat, but I'm going to play this other video instead. <laughs> <laughs> this other video gets... Oh. Wait. No, I didn't see that. Sorry. Sorry, PG, I didn't see it. I was on the other no. one. No, I saw it, but this other video okay. goes way more into detail. Oh, Soli, I'm still afraid of heights. No, nope, nope, don't want to go full screen. All right. My internet doesn't suck. My email, just, you guys are down in chat. Just sit down and chat. Quit trying to run my show. So this this is a, a picture of the 
I'm V Dolly. The channel that we're going to be looking at today is called What's Going On With Shipping. Um, the guy is, is very, very talented in the knowledge of everything that's going on. Um, so here we'll, we'll start it out. Let me get, jump ahead a little bit. Recovery operation. But I want to give you some imagery and some ideas of what's going on with the vessel right now and some background for the Port of Baltimore, what we can expect. So just a couple of images of the Port of Baltimore. These are coming from the BBC. Uh, you can see Dolly with the bridge actually hanging over the bow of the vessel. Uh, massive damage. Look at that, you guys. Like, Damn. that vessel makes that bridge look tiny. Yeah. You guys, you guys got to remember, these container things here, they're as big as semi-trailers. Look at how high they're stacked, how far across they're stacked. Damage to the forward part of the ship. Uh, the ship has a containment boom around it to ensure that there's not any oil or fuel leakage around it parts of the front container stack have collapsed the ship is carrying about 4700 containers on board it's rated for 10,000 teu those are 20 foot equivalent units but most of these containers on board are 40 foot equivalent units equal to two teus the smaller containers tend to be carried forward uh, they also tend to be the lightest usually empty containers and some containers have toppled into the water and we've got a partial stack collapse this is the port side of Dolly. You'll notice that the port anchor is down. Uh, when initial images were shown of this, that anchor was leading back aft almost directly. That indicated they had dropped the anchor early and it had dragged along. If they had just dropped it here, it would be straight up and down, and it's not. The damage to the bow is substantial. Uh, this vessel is going to require repairs where it's going to be able to sail. Plus, we don't know the damage below the waterline. I would assume that Coast Guard ship and classification inspectors are on board uh, assessing the vessel as we speak. And then just the last image here showing uh, the dolly uh, in the position it is uh, right now. Obviously, look how fully loaded that thing is. And you guys, I mean, that's why I say when you think about the amount of weight and everything that's traveling around and trying to stop that, man. Yeah, to, just to no way. Clear the yeah, it's just insane. Have to move the dolly. They will not move the dolly because of the bridge entanglement at this time, especially as they're doing diving and trying to locate uh the the bodies of those who have been lost so they don't want to move it it's going to cause more problems all right this is the port of baltimore from marine traffic uh i'm going to bring you in here in a minute but I'm actually going to zoom out here first take you out in the larger chesapeake bay here you see the large anchorage just south of the bay bridge this is ships waiting to get into baltimore there are actually more so if you look what he's showing here is you see all these green dots down here these yeah. are all ships. These are all ships waiting to get into the port back down here oh, where man. they need to go. Um, and then he, the bridge is like right here. If you look here, you see all these other dots that are in here. These are all the yeah. ships that are trapped in there. So all oh. these dots that you see are all dot. There are all shipping containers and stuff that are waiting to go in. Oh, so that's why they have to be out at a certain time. Just to keep them yeah. going. Just to keep them going because there's only certain shipping lanes to get in and out of. Because what ends up happening when you get into the rivers and stuff, they have to dredge the shipping lane. Damn. Yeah. So. More ships further down the bay uh, on the entrance. So I'm going to take you here into the bay and show you part of it. So here is the dolly, here is the bridge. Uh, you'll notice Coast Guard vessels have a quarantine area around it. You cannot approach the area at this time. Uh, the Coast Guard has set up a security zone in and around the area. And so dolly is, is right there impaled on that lower uh, uh, southern uh, stanchion right there. 
Uh, Port of Baltimore, you'll see, I'm going to zoom out here and I'm going to show you a, a terminal map here in a minute. This is the Sparrows Point region. So there are some facilities that are outside the Patapsco River Bridge, but the vast majority of the facilities for the Port of Baltimore are on the other side here. And what we see here is quite a few vessels are going to be trapped in here. We've got a bulk ship down here that's going to be stuck in here. There's a container ship up against the berth uh, over at Dundalk, uh, another bulker over here. There's a general cargo ship uh, over here. And then there are four ships of the Maritime Administration's Ready Reserve Force. These are military vessels that can be used in, in terms of military sea lift. Uh, there's the Gary Gordon here and Terry's and Denebola up here. And then there's the Cape Washington. Uh, so as you guys can see, there's several ships that are stuck um, inside the port right now. Uh, you can see on the big screen here. Um, these are the main ports that the ships come in and they'll dock up. You can kind of see a couple of them there already. Um, they'll dock up, they drop all their cargo and everything and then they come back out and then the same things over here and then the same thing down here you know so there's there's the main points are right here there is one outside of it like he had shown a few minutes ago but um you know it uh yeah not a problem Brittany. i'm glad you made it home safe how do you sit down and chat shut up you know, that's a polite way of saying shut up. Does that make sense? So is that clear? Does that make yep. sense? Yep. Good. I was just wondering if it wasn't, you know, I was trying to be polite. The Cape Wrath, the fifth vessel that's usually up here was returning, but uh, had not returned yet. So it's actually going to probably stage into the port of Norfolk and stand by. So this is a, a diagram here. It shows you a little bit more on the port here. So right here again, this is Trade Port Atlantic. This is the old Sparrows Point shipyard area here. This is the area that is outside. This is Dock Marine Terminal. Do you see the container cranes right here? Here is Secret Terminal. Uh, it was Secret from which uh, the Dolly had left. Over here, you have the coal piers. There's a series of coal piers. There are coal piers located right here. There are other coal piers down here. Here's the Fairfield. And now when you guys hear about that, the coal fields, um, that's kind of important because there's still a lot, a lot of factories and or not factories, um, a lot of uh, power plants and everything that run off of coal. And um if we can't get coal into those areas or coal out of those areas, you know, that could start putting a little bit of uh, a tension on our, on our uh, industry, you know, for electricity. I mean, I know out here we have, I mean, Sway even seen it. We have trains upon trains upon trains full, you know, a hundred, 200 cars long, full of uh, coal out at our consumer's power plant. Yeah. It was awesome to see it we don't have stuff like that around here build in atlantic yeah and, it, and it's cool to see but it sucks at the same time because when you get stuck behind those trains it's like 15 minutes waiting because yeah. when they're coming through town they're going like 25 miles an hour so they're just when they pass by you they're just clunk 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 clunk, clunk, clunk. and there's like 200 train cars and you're like yep yeah, yep yeah, let me just throw me in underneath one of these Ain't nobody in trouble. You guys are so you guys are so sensitive. Terminal down here. And then over here is Locust Point uh, Marine Terminal. Uh, this is the south side. The north side is up here. All of this on to the west of the bridge now is inaccessible. Smaller boats can get under the bridge once they clear it. But the main channel into uh, more, which runs right here, is now shut because of the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. So I want to go through the events that transpired the other day of 26 March when the... So now he's going to go through what actually happened, you know, to the boat and how it happened and all those fun, fun things. It gives us a little bit more 
look into it a little bit more in-depth look to it dolly left the dundalk terminal she came off the berth here with two tugs very common you would see two tugs helping the vessel off two McAllister tugs the ship was moved into the stream and then uh, I, I do this every time when i want to go full screen seated down and it's at this position right here when the ship is about two-thirds of a mile from the bridge uh, at 05 24 32 utc time is four hour difference between uh baltimore and utc time so it was 1 24 in the morning that's when the vessel lost power so this clip is magnified and sped up but here is dolly right here the dundock terminal is right behind it so you see these cranes right here that is up on the dundock terminal so the ship had come off the berth actually swung all the way around out of frame here to the left and now i was coming back in so so back here you'll actually see the route that it took so it actually left the dock right here and like he had said it had tugs um attached to it to help it go up current and then get into the current to come back down to line itself up so it actually did a big huge u-turn before it started heading down towards the bridge So then they, so it's not the like, tugs came off, the tugs came off and then. Yeah. Yeah. Even, even oh, with the okay. tugs on, oh, even okay. with the tugs on, um, because the tugs only help guide you. That's all oh, that okay. they do. Okay. And they were saying, even with the tugs on at that point, it would have still been extreme. It wouldn't have been impossible, but it would have been extremely hard for them to have missed the, the uh, right to miss the, the, the bridge. But um hey guys don't remember or don't forget to hit the like button and uh make sure if you guys like what we're starting to do here you know think about becoming a member it's only 2.99 in uh baltimore and utc time so it was 1 24 in the morning that's when the vessel lost power so this clip is magnified and sped up but here is Dolly right here. The Dundalk terminal is right behind it. So you see these cranes right here. That is up on the Dundalk terminal. So the ship had come off the berth, actually swung all the way around frame here to the left. And now is coming back in. It is heading for, this is the southern pillar right here. This is the pillar they're going to hit. And it's heading for right under the center span of the bridge. And talking to engineers and other mariners i know we've come up with a couple of ideas here of what could have caused the power failure and that power of power failure could be caused by bad fuel getting into the engine it could have been caused by a cooling water which we now know that it was due to the refrigeration systems blockage uh, could have been an overload trip of the engine but Whatever it was, we see the ship lose power. So I'm going to go ahead and let this play here. And here's the vessel maneuvering in, and you see her go dark. So that's the exact position we saw the vessel in. Now remember, too, you guys, this is actually sped up. This is not how fast it was going. Um, I'll go to another video of how fast it was, or the whole thing here in a minute. But this video here is actually sped up. A few moments ago. So here's the ship and as moving you guys again. Can see, we... Let me stop here. You guys can see the traffic crossing of the bridge right now. And I mean, that boat is not that far from the bridge. See it heading that way. And now we're going to have the lights come back on. And when the lights come back on, there's a couple of indicators here for us. So number one, uh, this doesn't seem to be the main. Now, if you guys also look too, um, back here, you'll see a moment when all the traffic just stops. You'll see that there's just there's uh, cars flying by left and right, and then all of a sudden there's just nothing. And that power of power failure could be caused by bad fuel getting into the engine. It could have been caused by a cooling water blockage. Uh, it could have been an overload trip of the engine. But whatever it was, we see the ship lose power. So I'm going to go ahead and let this play here. And here's the vessel maneuvering in. And you see her go dark. So that's the exact position we saw the vessel in a few moments ago. So now you guys see the vehicles driving back and forth right now. And you'll see them just stop. It seems like it's pretty constant of vehicles coming into view. And then there's just none. 
So here's the ship moving again. We see it heading that way. And now we're going to have the lights come back on. And when the lights come back on, there's a couple of indicators here for us. So number one, uh, this doesn't seem to be the main propulsion coming. So you can kind of see the moment when all the traffic is on. One of the things that I noticed is the foremast light is not coming on. We've got the top light. We've got the run, we've got the running lights on. We've got lights along the side of the vessel, but we don't have the foremast light on. And that may be an indication that what we saw here was the generator kicking on. Uh, the ship has an emergency service generator that is above the waterline, uh, usually in the after house. That's enough to get some power on. Not sure if they have enough power to operate the rudder at this point. If they did, they would be able to still use the momentum of the vessel and be able to steer the vessel. I don't think they have power for the rudder because what we're going to see here is the vessel is going to begin to turn with the current and with the wind southbound into the bridge. So here it is moving again. You see it beginning that movement. Now, if you notice right there, the light, the foremast light popped on. It was very quick, but the foremast light popped on and we're seeing black smoke come out. That's usually an indication that they're dumping air to restart the diesel. This is a big kind of, of plume of air that is sent in. This is how you start a big marine diesel. And that could be the main engine that's kicking in at this time. And so now they may have the main engine coming back online at this moment, but you'll see the vessel has begun its swing. Go ahead and let this play. Still seeing that black smoke. We're seeing the vessel move. So, so notice how it's moving to the right there. And now you lose power again. Once again, the ship drops its power. And again, that could be the inherent issue that they didn't fix when they restarted the engine. So now the vessel is starting its move to the right. This looks much more pronounced than it is. I showed you in my video yesterday, the track line here of the vessel in marine traffic. Uh, but this is a very gradual, it looks like it's, it's kind of steering, like turning into it, but it's a perspective error that you're seeing right here. So what they're trying to do here is they're trying to spin. They're trying to spin the rear end out so that if they can get propulsion again, then they can get that propulsion moving forward through the uh, through the bridge, and um, instead of sideways like it is. But like you guys heard too, is that these ships when they're in the wind and everything like that? Hey, welcome to the puppy pack, Brittany. Thank you for joining. Oh, thank you, Brittany. You're supposed to be watching chat sway. <laughs> I was, I zoomed I in to see it. the bow. <laughs> yes. I know, I know. But, um, uh, but yeah, so these things just act like a giant sail, you know? Um, even when you talk to truck drivers or even box truck drivers or anything like that, um, you, they'll tell you that when they hit real high windy areas, it'll throw the truck all over the place. So now the vessel is moving. We see it come back in. We're going to see the power come back on again. There's the power. And even more black smoke coming in. It's at this point, we believe in going astern because what you're going to see is the ship is going to stop its swing to the right and steady up straight and start swinging to the left to try to get back into the channel. It's moving more the port here. So here's the vessel. You can see the stern still kicking out, but then it kind of slows down here and you get a head on perspective of the vessel and then the vessel will begin its shift over to the left. But by which point it's going to hit the uh, pillar. And that's where you see right there. You saw that kind of kick up of the smoke right there. That is where it hits. And then it actually physically hits the bridge with the uh, top of the vessel. So let's go back just a little bit here. Oh, so damn. I as you can tell I, I thought it fell like in little pieces but boy it just no. went all the way down yeah oh. yeah that's scary yeah it uh I mean Sorry, why isn't it? Okay, it took me off the page, so I couldn't like get to it. Um, but as you can see, not only did it hit the bottom where the majority of the structure it um, strength is at, those cement pillars, 
because the pillars that come up to the bridge are actually cemented inside of these cement pillars as well. Um, so not only did it hit the bottom, the middle, and then the bridge itself, so it kind of just took out like the whole span of the support system from the from the one support way off the screen to the right to the support that you can see just on screen to the left those would be the only two supports that would be holding up that whole span of section of um bridge and with these suspension bridges that's exactly what they are they're suspended over the tops of these things like this so it's kind of the bridge itself has literally stood no chance it's and then it actually physically hits the bridge with the uh, top of the vessel and so right here you see the smoke come up and then the the bow here the containers actually physically hit so let you can kind of see the distance that i was speaking about right back here so now if you look, let me zoom up, let me pull it full screen. If you look, one of the structures supports were here and then the other structure support was way over here. And also too, if you look, these two center structure supports, uh, you can see how they have the, the corners um, supported here um, going down to the support. Um, that adds a bit of str uh, strength and if you see these ones that are to the way left and the way far right, right off the edge of the screen right there, um, or right at the edge of the screen, those ones don't actually have those corner supports like that because the majority of the strength of this bridge is on... on Here you see the smoke come up. And ...are on these two center supports, and this boat takes out the one center support. And now if you watch, you'll watch how the thing kind of drops straight down and then it snaps into sections scary wind it a little let me rewind it a little bit and so right here you see the smoke come up and then the the bow here the containers actually physically hit that piling and knocks the piling out. And because this is a continuous length bridge, when you knock out the one support, the entire bridge will collapse. So this is for Synergy Energy. This is the group that owns. So that kind of explains to you on how, you know, with the boat and how it drifted and everything, how it lost its, um, how it lost its propulsion and how it lost all of its power and whatnot. Um, this next section that he has just talks about uh, the inspections that it's gone through and everything like that. So it has, you know, it has gone through some uh, rigorous inspections. Um, this other video here that I wanted to take a look at. Hey, what's going on with shipping? So a quick update here. Uh, want to show you. So he, what he does here is he gives a visual track of the ship. Um, the the overhead view of the way the ship I, I don't know if i didn't watch this one fully um i'm just scrubbing through it real quick to see yeah you can still see all of it so we'll watch this one real quick the video of the track line of mv dolly as it leaves the berth here at the port of baltimore so here is dolly there will be two tugs bridget and eric McAllister, that are going to come in and take the ship off the berth you see its track line here as it heads out i'm gonna go ahead and let this play hey thank you sway congratulations jingles welcome i've got it sped up here a little bit so that you'll be able to see it go here a little bit faster than normal two tugs come in and they get the vessel off so what he did now is he's actually playing the like you can go for maritime usage you can actually go and track the uh, boats, just like you can um, airplanes. Oh, yeah. And the ship is going to head out into the track here. I'm going to pause. Yeah, he had it going quite fucking fast. But you've seen it come off, and then as soon as it gets into the track here, the tugs come off. Because this is the shipping lane right here that's dredged for it. 
And so once they get you into that, that's going to hold the high current. That's going to pull you right along. And when you're facing straight, you're going to be able to do all the turning and everything that you um, need to do. Now, when the tug was back, when they, the ship was back here, getting ready to leave, it actually had to fight the current going all the way up and then around. So it needed the tug A because it only has a propeller on the back. It needed the tugs to pull it off sideways from the, uh, so it'd have one or two tugs up front and then one or two tugs in the back. And uh, they would be pulling sideways on the shipping container to get it out into the water away from the dock. And then it would start steaming ahead. And once it starts steaming ahead, the two tugs that are up front will help the boat steer. And then once it gets out into the, uh, the, the track here or the shipping lane, then they let it out on its own because now it's facing with the current, which will allow it to turn a lot easier. And then it's also, um, in the deepest parts. So you're, you're basically on the I've track. got it sped up here a little bit so that you'll be able to see it go here a little bit faster than normal. Two tugs come in and they get the vessel off. And the ship is going to head out into the track here. I'm going to pause it right here. I'm going to go ahead and reset here. The dolly is coming down her track just as you expect. The two tugs leave her. Not unusual. We see that happen all the time. She is in the channel. So as you've seen, if you guys watch here, you'll see the tug leave her and go over to here. You'll actually watch it leave. Watch the name, leave the tug. The dolly's coming down her track just as you expect. Okay. You see the name Eric McAllister right here? That's the name of the tug that is oh, that was attached to her. So now watch. Like I said, you can I'm gonna pause it right here. And we're going to go ahead and re reset here. Dolly is coming down her track just as you expect. The two tugs leave her. Not unusual. We see that happen all the time. She is in the channel now. This channel is is can be used for two 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 ships at a time, but they usually like to just do one. And so you see one ship. She is a little bit on the left side of the lane, just a little bit off center, but that is fine. She's doing about six, speeding up here to about seven eight knots go ahead and readjust so here is the key bridge right here and this is where i want to kind of get this coincided with what's going on all right on the left is marine traffic on the right is the live feed that we have from the port of baltimore okay okay so if you guys understand that over here on the left hand side is the actual um gps tracking of the ship itself on the right hand side is the actual video of the ship itself. Okay, I tried to sync this up the best I could. The videos are not running at exactly the same moment, but this is the moment that we see Dolly lose power. She goes dark in the video up here. She is out without power at this time. You see the vessel is progressing right here at about 8.5 knots. And she's heading for the key bridge at this moment. Hello. And again, one of the things that we're not sure about here is what is causing the power. So if you guys, um, I wise do you guys know what eight, five, huh? Oh, I was saying hi to wise tree. Hey, wise tree. So do you guys know how fast eight and a half knots is? That's like miles per hour. I think Anybody? it was like eight miles. 9.78 miles per hour. So just, just yeah. about 10 miles per hour. Power outage on the vessel. Uh, is it mechanical? Is it computer? Is it fuel? We just don't know. But the ship goes completely dark. And let me be clear. The work well, we do know now that it was an electrical issue. So that had, you know, like I said, this this one was from earlier this afternoon. First feeling ever on a ship is to lose power. Everything gets quiet. S silence is the enemy on a ship. That means everything. 
everything has gone wrong. And let me tell you, if the ship goes silent, it is an eerie, scary feeling. I was never on a ship this size. Like I said, I was on submarines, but so here we you got to think of walking into in a, a loud, noisy um, shop, right? Like a, a manufacturing shop. And then everything just shuts down at the same time. And it just goes quiet. You're almost like, did I just die? We see the vessel coming out. It had just come from the secret terminal, which you can see right behind it. Uh, secret. She was actually up on this berth right over here where the cranes are. Uh, just underneath the center part of the bridge. Now, again, what I like to point out is you guys can see in the video on the right, look at all this traffic that's crossing. You know, they did a great job at shutting this bridge down in time. Uh, and she's coming down. So she's still progressing down. She's doing about 8.5 knots at this point. And she is coming down the channel. Now, I got this playing at basically real time. Uh, we're going to go ahead and speed it up here in a minute. But I want to get to the point where she will. So if you guys see how it's just barely creeping along, that this the speed of that boat right now is in real time. So the speed that you're seeing is how fast it's actually going. It hasn't been slowed down. It hasn't been edited or nothing like that. So you can tell it, it really wasn't going all that fast. It's just a matter of that all that weight was traveling in a specific direction. Get her power back on. And as she progresses, we'll see the lights come back on with the vessel. Now, at this moment, there's a big question about whether or not the ship has rudder control. This is the key thing. If the ship does not have rudder control, then the ship is careening out of control. There's nothing you can do. Uh, the ship would have an anchor ready to drop. You would have a crew up on the bow. But the question is, is that crew still there? Are they standing by? They should be in place until they get out past the bridge and the channel. There is a Maryland Bay pilot on board advising the ship's master. Right at this moment, hopefully, they're calling out uh, issues on Channel 16 and the other hailing channels that they'll be using to tell them to be aware. They will have portable radio, so they don't need the ship's radio. Here you see the power come back on the vessel. So now uh, Dolly has power back on. She is starting to drift. If you look at uh, marine traffic here, she is starting to drift toward the uh, south side of the channel at this point. So she is beginning her movement. Remember, this is a vessel that is about 100,000 tons. So a substantial size vessel, it will have a lot of momentum. <clears throat> so again, like I was saying, I, I really want to point out the fact that look at the traffic that is no longer on that bridge. You know, that is that is what nobody was injured yeah. on the on the boat itself. You know, so like the big key thing, you know, an important thing to look at is look at how our emergency response teams did. You know, um, one of the other things that I wanted to point out too, is that with these shipping vessels, the captains and the co-pilots and everybody on board, they are not the ones driving the boat. They are not the ones in charge of driving the boat. You will have, um, what's called, uh, ah, shit. Oh man, he's a maritime captain is what he is. Um, I can't remember the specific name for them, but they have, uh, they have specific people that come on these boats and guide these boats in and out of port. So the one that's actually driving this boat right now is not the actual captain. There's a maritime captain that's on there that is actually doing and calling all the shots. So that's one of the other key things to remember is, is that the captain and Shit the co-pilot. Uh, uh, yeah, but it's uh, it's called something else. Oh. Did you just look it up? Uh, yeah, I just, it listed a couple different things that it could be. Sea captain, master, uh, yeah. shipmaster. Yeah, well, either way, any of those names, you know, I don't, I don't, it's been so long, I can't remember them. So you're probably 100% correct. But they have one of those individuals that their job is to specifically guide these ships in and out of port.
on her. And if they had lost power, then the rudder would not be answering. So wherever that rudder was, even if the rudder was dead center, it's not providing any maneuverability because you have torque from the propeller. The propeller is going to want to twist the ship. Now we're seeing smoke belching out of the, the ship. Here's the smoke coming out. What we tend to think is this is the ship starting to back down. Uh, they will try to get way off the ship. And that's going to be an indication we're going to see here if. So what he's saying there when he says um, back down, that means that they're they're trying to back down. They're trying to put that ship in full reverse. If the ship begins to slow down. So I got it running now. It's a little bit off sync. Uh, it's just not quite uh, chi uh, timed in exactly. We're lagging. Now, if you're looking at this here, off to the left, here's the dolly right here. You see the name, and then you kind of see the green object right next to it. The bridge goes all the way across right here, all right? So as it's moving on the right-hand side, it's kind of tracking on the left-hand side from a GPS point of view. Um, and so you can kind of see both in live time and then like an overhead GPS view of it, of it happening. Now the two videos are not perfectly synced up, but they uh, they're pretty damn close. Behind on the video, but what you do see is the ship is starting to lose way. It's starting to come off. It's down to seven point six knots. Now the ship is coming out of the channel at this point, and still has. A so with him saying, like you see here, now it says seven point six knots. If you look just back here, it's. Uh, let me go back just a little bit. You'll see right when it starts. So we're at 8.7 knots right now. If you keep looking at it, you'll see it start drop. The knots start dropping down, which means the miles per hour start dropping down. Speed starts dropping down, however you want to look at it. But that's that's more than likely when they started backing down, when they regained power and they were trying to throw the thing in reverse. So just keep an eye on it. You'll see... Um, you'll see that speed actually start dropping off sync. Uh, it's just not quite uh, chi uh, timed in exactly. We're lagging behind on the video, and right? There, but you do right there. You see it just drop from 8.7 down to 7.6. And so now it's trying to slow itself down. You see is the ship is starting to lose way. It's starting to come off. It's down to 7.6 knots. Now the ship now, like he had said, um, when that ship starting started backing down because of all of the torque it would have twisted that shit that shit that ship sideways like it did all right so that's why you see this ship going from straight to all of a sudden like kicked sideways ship is coming out of the channel at this point and still has a lot of way on that could be just a little bit of loss there by maneuverability we know she drops her port anchor. We just don't know when she drops the port anchor. And again, more black smoke coming out of the vessel. This is either an engine failure or the, the issue of the ship trying to uh, back down. And then you have the And from what we already know, um, that was more than likely the ship trying to back down because uh, they had kill shot would the water movement also become an issue um yes because if they're not underway then they'll just drift with the current um so yeah they had there's multitudes of issues there that's why i say it doesn't look like it was anything weird um strike ends the bridge that's where you see the speed come off to about 1.5 knots there and on the video, you will see the ship will be a big splash in front of the vessel as it hits that piling. And you will see the uh, uh, collapse of the pier. You're still seeing black smoke emanating from the vessel at this point. Uh, the ship has basically come now to a full stop at this point on terms of its maneuverability. It's still showing a little bit of way on. on because of the GPS, uh, it just takes a while for AIS and GPS to get in sync with that. And this is the moment of impact that we will see here, uh, about 128 
in the morning, Eastern Standard Time, four hour difference between UTC. See a big splash there as the pylons hit and then you have the, the bridge collapse. So that gives you a kind of a play by. So yeah, like he said, that gives you kind of a play by play on um, how that how that actually happened and how that occurred. Uh, there's another one, one more quick video that I want to show you, and then we're going to wrap this up. So wait, was there anything that you wanted to add in while I'm looking for this video? Oh, um, it was called a Harbor pilot. Yeah. I think we called it back in the day, a Harbor master. Oh yeah. Yeah. So okay. I, you're, I, I think you're, I think you're hundred percent correct. So, I mean, it's, that's 20 years later, <laughs> but what they do, can you read off what their job essentially is to do? Yeah. The 251 seconds is the amount of time that they had from when the initial issue happened to when they, what was it, when they struck the bridge, Sway? Yeah. Oh, when so the power only, went out. Yeah, okay, 251 seconds. There you go. Yeah, can you repeat that? Yeah, 251 seconds. Um to uh once the power went out to try to uh maneuver maneuver the ship away from the bridge oh okay i got you i got you so from the time the original power went out um if they would have gotten they had 251 seconds to correct the issue no matter what the problems were behind it Right. Gotcha. I follow you. And then Hold on, I'm trying uh, to pull. Go ahead. The harbor pilots are brought on board in what is considered restricted maneuverability for navigation areas. They are local experts who are usually certified by the state or federal government to provide advice to the master of the vessel as to how to control the vessel safely and adequately through the piloted waters, which in this case would be down the river from the port of Baltimore. Pilots are well practiced in close quarters manu maneuvering, especially with tugboats and docking the vessels alongside the assigned berth. So, like she, like we were saying before, essentially they go on board and maneuver the ship for the captains because they're the experts of the waterways in that area. Yep. So, this is the last video we're going to watch. It's only a couple minutes long, but it actually shows the full video of the bridge. Um, it shows the cars that were on the bridge when the impact happened. Um, it kind of just shows a little bit of everything here. <clears throat> I'm not I'm not sure if this guy did videos on the Titan. I would have to look. You know, one of the things, too, that I wanted to point out is that she had power all the way through the point of <clears throat> um, the tugs pulling her off the pier, taking her up the river and putting her in into the lane. You know, she had power all the way through all of that up to this point. So, um, you know, that it's it's something that just to look at.
yeah, a lot more could have, a lot more people could have died on that. Yeah, that. Do you if see how many called in? Do you see how many vehicles are passing just in this time frame here? Yeah. On the bridge, you got to figure like again. Look at the traffic. How much was there during the time? I mean, you probably seen 40 50 cars cross that bridge and yep. like the people in that specific section where the bridge got hit wouldn't have been the only ones that were affected that entire span of that whole section three sections of bridge right there collapsed so any car that would have been on any of those sections would have they would have been in the river so it's, yeah and if, it, you know, if they wanted to be nefarious they wouldn't have called ahead and told them not that far ahead you know if, if it was if they want it, I mean, don't get me wrong. If it was nefarious, then they still accomplished a lot of things. You know, the shipping port is yeah. shut down. Um, so there, there's still a lot, a lot there, but not, you know, the actual factual proof that's out here. It doesn't seem like this was malicious in any way. It seems like it was just like uh, uh, PJ said earlier, it was just a ship hitting a bridge. Like that's, from what I've found so far and all the information, I mean, again, this just happened yesterday. So there's a lot of time for more information to come out, but from the looks of everything and from like what this guy says, and from what I know about maritime laws and uh, not just laws, not, it has nothing to do with maritime laws about maritime um, shipping and how the ships work in the water and being a maritime person myself. Um, it just, it, it seems like it is just the ship hitting a bridge. Now you guys see all these flashing lights up here. Um, these are all the construction workers that were on the bridge. And we'll actually, I think we'll see the ones that perished. Um, we'll actually see their vehicles go in the water. Now, if you guys look at like this moment right now, you got two semis that are coming across, you know, you got a semi there and you got a semi that's crossing here. You know, the, the camera's not picking it up real well. You'll see them as they drive, but you still have semis and traffic oh. coming across the bridge at this time. Oh, kill shot. The video is not showing. There's no video at all. Uh, -uh it's not it, the share screen's not on either. Did it was it showing at one point or has it, have you guys been missing it the whole time? I saw it. I just noticed it went down though. Can you guys see it now? Nah, yep. All right. Yes, construction workers passed. So has it not showed this whole time, you guys? We saw, yeah, we saw, I was seeing it. Did you guys? All right, we're just going to continue on. Some people see it, some people don't. I don't know if people need to put their glasses on or turn their phones on to see it or what's going on, but. All right. So as you guys can see, like I was saying, is there's traffic 
all long. Now the problem with backing it down on ship is, is that it's single prop. And what's going to happen is when you try to back down, the ship is going to start careening. It's going to start kind of pitching around. And what happens here, based on the track line that I saw in marine traffic, is the ship starts to go across now the channel. Now, we just we watched the same video just crap down just a few minutes ago. The only reason why we're watching this video now um, is uh, because now you guys can see the whole entirety of the the uh, bridge going down instead of just a couple sections well she was basically in the middle of the channel coming out was right down the there's, there's and now she's still screening going across the right like, side notice more the right black smoke right coming out i saw a helicopter image this morning that showed that the you know I, i'm gonna mute him so that i don't gotta listen to him but you guys can see the bridge the traffic coming across the bridge still right now um and like right now is when they stopped traffic. If you guys can see, there's no more traffic coming from either side with the exception of this one semi. Yep. So you guys can see there's no, there's no traffic now coming. And you know, if you watch, you'll see that that semi gets just barely gets off the, uh, um bridge now now mine's buffering perfect yeah now you'll see it just barely moments off the bridge before that before it hits and the bridge goes down sorry i gotta go to the full, full screen a minute So now that semi is completely off the bridge. The ship, Singapore flag, Singapore registered company. Uh, Dolly is one of these ships that basically is leased by the larger operating companies. Uh, so we're not exactly sure whose route she was on what company she was servicing. She was out of Baltimore heading to Colombo. So she was heading down to the Panama Canal and she was going to be heading across the Pacific. At this point, she is heading right for the pylons. And understand, once you take out a pylon on a bridge, that's it. These bridges are designed to rest on top of that pylon. Okay, so we're going to jump forward. We've already heard what he's said about all this 15 times over again. And it seems like he's just going to keep repeating it. So here's the moment of impact. You guys can see the splash underneath. Let me enlarge it so that we can really see it. You guys can see the splash underneath. Now you can still see the vehicles on the bridge up here. Damn. So just watch. You guys can see the vehicles where the flash lights were at, where the construction workers were at. They're still there. Um, and the ship is at this moment connecting with the uh the the bridge starboard anchor that's her hitting right there you can see the big splash as she hit it's the piling right there there are barriers around the come on quit doing this pilings but not enough and oh, that will come so there you go the vehicles and everything how was there not vehicles in there i thought there was I thought I just saw some. There, there was. Oh, and they tried to, there, they there tried to say there was no vehicles in the water. Yeah, that's what they're 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 doing the recovery for these construction workers that were in the vehicles right now. Oh, okay, I get what you're saying. So if, if you watch right in the middle of the thing here, you'll see the flashing lights, and you'll yeah. see the vehicle. I'm gonna back it up a little bit. I'll back it up like a minute before oh, it hits. Duh. I was I was thinking they were out like working on the bridge out never mind now I understand what it's saying oh you thought they were on boats working on the bridge no no I thought that I wasn't even thinking that they had the stupid uh or their vehicles to work on the bridge you know like to get them oh. on the bridge to work and so I was thinking they were never mind I understand yeah. now so here, if you guys watch, 
uh, watch for the flashing lights on the bridge. Those are the construction vehicles. And you'll actually watch them drop. Meaning that it dragged. But at any sort of speed... It See the flashing lights on the bridge? Yeah. Come on. It's not going to stop the vessel. Uh, she would have dropped... I'm not sure if she dropped the... Uh, uh... Why are you doing this? Stop it. Just need you to play 10 seconds. Of Starboard the anchor, video. that's her hitting right there. You can see the big splash as she hits the piling right there. Our barriers around the pilings, but not enough. And that, that will cause the, the collapse and just the horror of this event taking place here. So let's watch that. There, there are barriers around. Okay. Now you guys can see she hit this whole section completely collapsed now you can see the vehicles right here on the bridge all right on the pilot things but not enough and there they go into the water yeah. and that will cause the the collapse and just the horror of this event taking place here and, and that is the tragedy right there So, so yeah, guys, there's a little bit of an update on everything that's going on. It's only day two. You know, I'm going to keep looking at it a little bit. If there's any more information that comes out, then we'll, uh, we'll definitely talk about it a little bit more. And one of these days I'll do a live on my, my times in the military and stuff, but maybe we'll do that on a members only live. Um, I want to try giving back to some of the members once we start getting a few of them and those are some stories that not necessarily do i want all over the internet so um yeah but you know that significant event that's that's a, or i said or i mean that is a significant event that's going on right now um just like i said just happened yesterday so it uh it's kind of fresh and new and there's a lot more to develop but um yeah, you guys, you guys just be careful. There's a lot of wild and crazy things going out there, going on out there. So we're going to go ahead and wrap this one up. Uh, we love you. And we'll talk at you guys on the next one. Bye, guys. Night, everybody.